We are back for business mathematics. So the last time we started with functions and equations. Today, we are going to look at uh, solving the tutorial set. Then we use um, 30, 45 minutes to solve tutorial sets. Then we'll start with car cross. So I hope you guys are ready. You have your calculators by your side. Remember, this is a mathematics class. And you will need calculators. So please kindly get your calculators by your side. And kindly inform your friends that the class is about to start. PHKCR, please make me co-host. Johnson, are you there? Okay, thank you. Okay, can we start? Okay, please let's start. Are you ready? If you are ready, give me a yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, we are ready. Yes, sir. So let's start. I want someone who can read well to be reading for me. So for the sake of convenience, I'll be copying the questions and pasting them on my on my board for the sake of convenience. Okay, so I want someone who can read well to read for me. So who was the honest by reading for us? Please, who was the honest by reading for us? 
Yasmin. Yasmin, please read for us. The demand function of a product for a manufacturer is given as P of X is equal to AX plus B. The manufacturer knows that he can sell 1,250 1, units when the price is five cities per unit. And he can sell 1,500 units at a price of four cities per unit. Find the total and average revenue function. Yes, ma'am. Continue. We, we didn't hear you. Uh, I finished. So, okay. <laughs> the demand function of a product for a manufacturer is given as P of X is equal to AX plus B. The manufacturer knows that he can sell 1,250 units when the price is five cities per unit. And he can sell 1,500 units at a price of four cities per unit. Find the total and average revenue function. So we have to find the total and the average revenue functions. We have to find the total and average revenue functions. So first of all, how do you find total revenue? That's the first thing. What's the formula for finding total revenue? Who can tell me? What's the formula for finding total revenue? The last time we did it too. Yes, Lydia. Price times quantity. Price times quantity. So total revenue, TR is equal to price times quantity. So total revenue is price times quantity. So then do we have price in the question? Price has not been given in the question. You don't have the price, but you have been given an information or certain information that will help you for, uh, find the price. So that information, you are to use those information to develop the price function. The last time I told you that the price function is the same as the demand function. So whenever you are going to find the demand function, it's the same as the price function. So you have to develop the price function, applying the slope of a line. Okay, the slope of a line. And the last time we did it. So they said they have given us P of X is equal to AX plus B. So you have to develop the price function. So developing the price function, Uh, we are saying that P is in the place of Y. So when we see P, that is the price. It's the same as Y. So our Y1 is what? It says the manufacturer knows that he can sell one to five units when the price is five. So Y1 is five. And then X1, X1 is what? One, two, five, zero. Okay, that is X1. Then Y2, it says you can sell one five, uh, one five zero zero unit at a price of four. So Y2 is four. And then X2, is 1,500. So having this, we can develop the price function, okay? Applying the slope of a line. So the slope of a line is Y is equal to MX plus what, C. So we have to find
here the M and the X. So that's all. It's not. Sorry, my network. I uh, asked someone. This is one thing I, I dislike about Zoom. When the network messes up and it goes off, you lose everything on the board. It really pains me a lot. Mm -hmm. I think we have to suggest to them to change that. Okay, so sorry for that. Let's continue. So continuing, I have written, you know why my Y1 already, Y2 and all that. So my M M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 all over x2 minus x1. So what is our y2? y2 is what? Four, right? Four minus five, which is y1. And then x2 is 1,500 minus x1. Five zero. Yes. So what do you get? Minus. Negative what? One over one over. One over what? Four. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. So just uh, take it to this mouse. Negative 0 0.004. Zero, 0 0.004. So that is our. Okay, that is our M. Then once we have found M, we will now find the C. You see this formula. And we know that C is equal to Y minus MX. So what is our y? We choose y. Let's choose y one. Y one is a uh, is five minus m, which is negative zero point zero zero four into bracket x x one one two five zero. So what do you get? Please, what do you get? 10. 10. So you get 10. So that is our C. So having our C and the M, you just slot them into the P of X equal to S plus B. The A is the M and the B is the C. So we will now have P of X. P of X is equal to the A is negative 0.004 negative 0 .004 X plus 10. Okay, so that is the price function. I get to the point. So the question 
will not tell you to find price function. They won't. You will be lucky to be told that, but they won't tell you. So they'll go straight and tell you, find the total revenue. Okay, find the total revenue. They won't tell you to develop the price function because you have been taught how to develop that already. So you know that to find total revenue, I need what? Price. So our TR is equal to what? Price times quantity. Let's use X for our quantity because they used X. Price times quantity. So once we have our price, we can now find our total revenue. So our price is negative 0.004x plus 10. Multiplying x. So what do we get? We get negative 0.004x squared. Okay, 4x squared. I'll put my x uh, squared later. 4x squared plus 10x. So that is what we get as our total revenue. You understand it? So I understand. I'm going over. The question, the question says we should find total the revenue and uh, the total and average revenue functions. Okay, that's the question. So how do you find total revenue? We know total revenue is price times quantity. But they haven't given us the price. They said the demand function of a product for a manufacturer is given us. So they have given you P of S equal to S plus B. This is their general. This is not specific. But they have given this to you in this form for you to know that the demand function is a linear function. Okay? For you to know that this is a linear function. So I told you that the demand function is the same as the price function. So once you have to find total revenue and you have not been given price, you have to develop the price function using the information provided. So our y1, y2, x1, x2 has been given. So you use the equation of a straight line, which is y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so y is equal to mx plus c. To, to find that, so you will find your m and find the c. It's the same as finding the a and the b in the uh, price function. So our M, we know Y2 minus Y1, YX2 minus plus one. So we slot in our Y2. The Y is the price. So whatever you see price is your Y and your X is the units. So we slot them in and we find our M. Please do you understand up to that point? Yes, please. Yes. So when you find your M, then you can now move on to find your C. And I've given the formula for the C as Y, is y minus MX. So just choose your y1 and the x1 to find that. So our y1 is 5 minus minus. Take note of the minus minus because the m is always negative or is negative. Minus minus the x1. But you find your c. When you find your c, then you slot them, you replace them with the a and b. So you have p of x plus negative x plus 10. So that becomes our price function. Are you okay? Yes, sir. So having your price function, you cannot find your total revenue. But total revenue is price times quantity. So you have your price multiplied by the quantity, which is X. So you open the bracket, negative 0.004X times X becomes 0. Point, becomes negative 0.004A squared plus 10X. Are you okay? Yes. Good. So that's it. Now move for it says average revenue function. So how do you find average revenue? Who can tell me? Average revenue. A R. That's yes. right. 
Yes. Okay, so say the total revenue over the quantity. Yes, so total revenue over quantity. That's good. Okay, so TR over X is your average revenue. Mm -hmm. TR over quantity. So you have your TR to be negative 0 0.004x squared. I'll put my squared there later. Plus 10x divided by x. So divide by x. So you take note that all each of them is over x. So negative 0 0.004 x squared divided by x. X will cancel one of the x. So you will get a r is equal to negative 0 0.004 x plus 10. That is average revenue. Okay, the x. This x will cancel one of this x here. So one of, only one of this will, be, uh, will remain, and that's it. Then this x will cancel this x, so the 10 will, will now be left alone, and that's it. Please, do you understand? Yes. Yes. So, so who can tell me, who can uh, give me an important observation here? Who, who, who is making some observation here? Please stop drawing on my board. Gifty, stop drawing on my board. SP, school prefect. Sir, please, we are getting back the, uh, the price for your function. Yes. So you see that the average revenue is the same as the price function. And you learned that under micro accounts, isn't it? Under market structures. I don't know if you took them serious. But so under market structure, yeah. And the market structure, yes. Yeah. Price is equal to average revenue. Yes. Uh -huh. So the same thing you have here. Okay. So that is it. So we are done with this particular uh, question. Let's look at another question. Please, those writing on my board, stop writing on my board. Okay, so Yasmin, read for me. The price of an airplane ticket for a return trip is $600. The airline company attracts an average 500 daily bookings at this price. It has been observed that there is a linear relationship between the price of the return trip and the number of bookings. This is such that for every $50 decrease in price, there is an additional 100 bookings. Form a linear equation that relates the number of bookings with the price of the ticket. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So this is actually a past question. Okay, this is actually a past question, but that is not the that's not the full question. We have moving ahead. We'll learn a topic called relative estimate. It's a full question. Usually, the first part at the first part. And it started from this side. It started right away from equations or functions where you have to develop your own price function and move along with it. So it means that from the very, from the onset, if you are wrong at developing the 
price function or other uh, uh, solutions becomes, and that is a uh, check the past question for 20, uh, I think 2015, yes. Check the past question for 2015, that is it. Okay, so it says that the, uh, the price of an airline, uh, airplane ticket for a return trip is 600, okay? So the airline company attracts an average of 500 daily bookings. So we can choose this as our X1 and what? Y1, okay? X1 and Y1. So uh, X1 is the bookings, that is the demand, 500, okay? Note that X is always unit, so 500. Then Y1, is the price 600. Now they said that we have X1 and Y1. We need X2 and Y2. It has not been given like the first instance where it was given straight away. Okay. It has not been given like we're given in the first instance. But they have given us a particular a uh, statement that if you understand the statement, you can use to get your X1 and your Y2, X2 and Y2. So they said it has been observed that there is a linear relationship between the price of the return trip and the number of bookings. And the linear re uh, relationship is such that for every 50 decrease in the price, there's an additional 100 bookings. Okay, for every 50 decrease in the price, there is an additional 100 bookings. Who understands this statement? Mm -hmm. Who can explain this statement to us? Mick. Mick, your hand is up. Yes. Um... I understand that with the X1, Y1, if we should decrease price 600 cities by $50, it comes to 550. Okay. The quantity would increase from 500 to 600. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is an excellent explanation. Any other? Any other, Mick, lower your hand. Any other, and, and mute yourself. Any other? Any other? So what Mick said is correct, okay? Mick was given an example that if you decrease the uh, price, which is 600 to let's say 550, Okay, because the difference is a 50 decrease. You get uh, the X1 will go up by 100 to 600. Are you getting a point? Yes, it is very important and very true. But take note that it is not only decreasing it to only uh, 550. Take note that there is every. Okay, there is every. So if you go up, if you the, ask you any time the price goes down by 50, quantity goes up by 100. So someone can decide, okay, I will not, uh, based on this, if price goes down to 400, if price goes down to 400, what would be X? Who can tell me? If price goes down to 400, what would be X? Uh -huh. Who can tell me? Yes, yeah, what's in? 900. 900, thank you. So for every 50 decrease, there's a 100 increase in bookings. So choosing your X1 and your, uh, choosing your X2, and your white, okay? Someone can go down by one. 
like the way Mick suggested, Y1 goes down to 550, X1 goes to 600. Someone can use Y, sorry, Y2 to be 500. So if your Y2 is 500, what would be X2? Who can tell me? If Y2 is 500, what would be X2? 700. 700. If your Y2 is uh, 350, what would be X2? 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. 1, 1, I get to the point. So someone can decide, uh, okay, X2. X2 is equal to uh, 600. And like me suggested, Y2 is equal to 550. Someone can use X2 to be, say, as I brought in uh, 900, and then Y2, 400. Or X2 to be uh, 700. Then Y2, 500. So it just, you just have to understand the, 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 the sentence there to be able to find your X2 and your Y2. And it will interest you to know that whichever X2 and Y2 that you use, our M will be the same, okay? The slope will be the same. So someone can decide to go with, with, someone can decide to go with this. Uh, someone can decide to go with that, with this one. Someone can also decide to go with this. Someone can decide to go with this. Our M, however, will be the same. So take note. If you like, let's try. Some Someone else use, others to use X2. I'm going to use the first X2 and Y2. Some of you to use second, others to use third. And let's see whether we get the same M and the same one, uh, C. So from, we are to form a linear equation that relates the number of bookings with the price of the ticket. Okay, that relates. So our Y is equal to MX, Plus C. So our M, we find our M. M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 all of our X2 minus X1. So I'll use the first Y1, uh, the first Y2 and X2. So I have Y2 to be 550 minus X1, a Y1600. Over X2 to be 600 minus 500. So in the end, what do I get? I get M zero point five. Okay, so who else, who used uh, any of them apart from the one I used? I used the second, the second one. You used the second one. Yes. And did you get negative zero point five? Yes. Okay, who used the third one? I used the third one. And did you get negative zero point five? Yes. yes, exactly. So as long as you are following that particular statement correctly, whichever values you use, someone can decide to use zero. <laughs> Why two to be zero? <laughs> and but the answers will be the same. Okay, the answers will be the same. So we have our M. Let's find our C. Our C is Y minus M X. 
So our uh, let's use y1. Y1 is a 600 minus m, which is negative 0 0.5. And then x, Johnson, I'm coming, I'll call you. Our x is a 500. Yes, Johnson. Yes, sir. Um, is that the uh, answer you see, I mean, for the end? Is it because of the rule of the map, you know? Pardon? Come again. Uh, I want to know why all the answers are the same, I mean, for the end. Yeah, because we are following the, 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 the linear relationship. It says the relationship is such that uh, for every 50 degrees, there's an additional 100. Look at it. 50 divided by 100 is what? For every 50 degrees, there's an additional 100. 50 divided by 100. 1 over 2. That's and 1 over 2 is what? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And is that our is our M not 0 0.5? Yes. Sir. And what is the relationship? When something goes up and something uh, when some one uh, one variable goes down and one uh, variable goes up, what relationship exists? Inverse. Inverse relationship. Inverse. That's why you can see negative. Okay. If I was solving this question, maybe for examination purposes, I'll have to show workings like I have done. But if I am solving this question, I, I, I won't even work, uh, do my workings. I'll just look at the relationship with the numbers and I'll determine my M. So for example, if this one should come to Sakai, Sakai, you don't need to show workings unless, I don't know. Sakai, you don't need to show working. So if I'm, for example, I'm solving Sakai questions for this, I won't waste my time to go and do the M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 and find my X2 and all that. I'll just divide my the, this one, I'll just look at it, 50 divided by 100, I'll get 0 0.5. And because it's an inverse relationship, I'll put my negative there, that's all. So just, uh, we are getting the same answers because the, because of the, the, the relationship that exists between them. Oh, okay, that's true. Okay, thank you very much. You are welcome. So please, what do we get here? 850. 850, so our C, is equal to 850. So having that, our P of X, our P of X becomes negative 0 0.5 X plus 850, that's all. So we have developed the linear function relating the price to the tickets, to the number of tickets, that's all. Any question here? Any question here? No, please. So when you go, question four is for you. So your assignment, right somewhere you know, as I'm teaching, I'll be giving you assignment. When you go, question four is for you, okay? When you go home, question four is for you. Yes, sir. Question four is for you as your assignment. Let's look at, let's move on. Um, take note that we are not solving all questions in the tutorial set. Some are not likely examinable questions. For example, question two. It's not an examinable question for you at this level. So don't think that we'll be solving all questions. So we don't even have time to solve all questions in the tutorial set. What you need to know, I'll make sure you know. Okay, so don't worry about anything. So let's proceed. I hope you are enjoying the class. Yeah, very well. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. This is not face to face, but uh, I just hope that you enjoy. So let's move on. Yes, my reader. My kid W. Smith, an emerging rapper, is getting ready to cut his first CD called Western Rap. The cost of recording the CD is $5,000, but copies are $5 a piece. 
if the CDs can be sold for $15 each, how many CDs must be sold to break even? So here is on what? Break even. The last time we did break even. So break even, you have to put down the items that you know uh, you need. So we need FC. Who can give me what FC? Which What is the FC in this question? First cost in this question. Who can give me the first cost in this question? Yes. Maybe 5,000. Please raise your hand and talk. Don't just talk. Let me give the opportunity to ICBR. Say at least $5,000. Uh, your name is what? AECBR or IECBR? <laughs> AECBR. Ah, uh, hey. So all of them are being wrong. AECBR, you. Thank you. So AECBR, okay. So the, this one is $5,000. Thank you. Yes, please. Then, which one is a variable cost per unit? Yes, Marta. Marta, variable um, cost per unit cost. Say the 15. Oh. He said the 15. He said if the CDs can be sold for $15. Yeah. So the 15 is your variable cost. Mm. Oh, I'm wrong. So who else will try? So if you are selling that thing, is it the cost? If you are selling that thing something for money, is it the cost? It can be sold for. Kojo, hey, Kezia. The piece is $5. So the variable cost is $5. Okay, copies are $5 a piece. So anytime you want to produce a copy, that's what it means. You know that when you are into music, you record the music once. Some of you, I don't know how many of you are into music, but I have a very good voice and I can sing. So I am into music. So when you go to the studio, you record the music once and you pay a cost. Okay, you pay for recording. Now, when, after you have recorded and you want to produce uh, CDs or whatever, you burn them onto the CDs. So the CDs will vary depending on the number. So that's the variable cost. So the time you want to produce a copy, you incur a cost of five cities, uh, five dollars. So that is a variable cost. They say copies can be sold for fifteen cities. So when you are selling it, so that's the price matter. Okay, we are selling the thing. We are selling it at a price of fifteen dollars. So price is fifteen dollars. Okay, so Marta, you understand it? Yes, please. Yes, so the price is 15. So having this, can we find the break-even? Do you remember the break-even formula? Yes, yes, please. Yes, FC, sir. FC over what? FC over the price minus the variable. Exactly, so you just put them in and then you solve for them. So this one, the hour session, eight questions. Now, do you know that business mathematics, you will have session A and session B. And you know that for session A, it is objectives. But before you choose an answer, you'll be required to show workings. Hey. Yes, so I'm telling you. So, so like, what, what would you get? When did you do this? A, please don't unmute yourself and talk if I've not called. Business mathematics has session A and session B. And note that you will not have answer booklets in the exams. The question comes with, the question paper comes with spaces provided and you have to show your workings there. If you mess up the space, that is your end. And for the session A, for example, this is a session A question. You'll be required to show workings as I am showing my workings here. If you don't show workings by you choose your answer, credit will not be given. It will be clearly stated as part of the instructions that credit will not be given to answers without workings. So please, 
take note of this course very serious. Okay, because even for session A, you still have to show workings. So our FC is 5,000. Price is 15 minus five. What did you get? Five hundred. So our BEP is what? Five hundred. So five hundred CDs. So the break even quantity is five hundred CDs. I hope there is no question. Yes, Martha. Sir, please, with the V, is it variable cost or variable yeah, yeah. cost? Variable per cost unit? per unit. Per unit. We we'll deal with the variable cost per unit. I'm representing okay. my variable cost per unit with V. So, wherever you see V, is variable cost per unit. All right. So, let's look at this particular question. Yes, my reader. AC, a doll maker from Takradi, is interested in the mass marketing and production of a ceramic doll of her own design called Oman. Oman. The initial investment required for plant and equipment is estimated at 25,000 CDs. Labor and material costs are approximately 10 CDs per doll. If the dolls can be sold for 50 CDs each, what volume of demand is necessary for the Oman doll to, um, say, please, I can't see that, but. To break even. To break even. Okay, so let's put down our parameters. So what, which one is our first cost? What's our first cost? Uh, Ama. Ama. Uh, please, it's 25,000. So that is the cost of the plant, okay? The yeah. plant, it doesn't vary with output. So that is 25,000, thank you. Now, which ones are our variable cost? Okay, what is our variable cost per unit? Yeah. Uh, Rita. <laughs> Sir, so, please, 10 cities. 10 cities? Yes, please. Okay, that's good. So 10 cities. And then which one is our, our price? Marta. 50 cities. So our price is 50 cities. You can easily find your break even, isn't it? Yes, sir. So you can find it, it's simple. So I'll not solve that again. So what did you get when you solved it? Just mention it. 625. OK, thank you. Yo, please read this for me. The demand function is given by the equation P is equal to 100 the um, 100 minus, minus, minus yes. 0.5 kilo 
What is the quantity demanded when price is five? So, the demand function is given by the equation P is equal to 100 minus 0 0.5 Q. What is the quantity demanded when price is five? Yes, this is simple to solve, isn't it? Yes. Yes, sir. Very simple. So you, you take your, you take the, you can take the demand function, which is P is equal to 100 minus 0 0.5 Q. They are putting the, the seven prices five. So they are giving you P of five. They are finding Q. Mm, five is equal to 100 minus 0 0.5 Q. Mm. So you can do group like terms. So the 0 0.5 goes there, 0 0.5 Q goes to the other side. Then the five comes here. So 100 minus five. So 0 0.5 Q is equal to 95. They divide both side by five, uh, 0 0.5. So Q is equal to what? 190. 190. 190. That's Okay. So read for me. UGBS company produces a product for which the variable cost per unit is six CDs and the fixed cost is 80 CDs, 80,000 CDs. Each unit has a selling price of $10. Determine the number of units that must be produced for the company to earn a profit of 60,000 Ghana CDs. Okay. So Let's put down our parameters. So we have uh, variable cost V is equal to what? Six. First cost is equal to 80,000. Okay. Then selling price is equal to 10. They said, how many units must be sold to earn a profit of? 60,000. Now the last time, so you can actually go by this in two ways. Okay, you can go, uh, like I can do this in two ways. You can decide to go the long way by using the equation equation uh, format where profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. Then you slot in and then you find your cure. But you can also use the last formula I gave you under break even, when we doing break even, do you remember? Yes. I gave you a particular formula that when you have to find the quantity that can give you a particular profit. Okay. I gave you a particular formula. Do you remember that formula? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so give me that formula. So the quantity cost plus profit. Yes, so the quantity is what? Fish cost, fish cost, plus, plus what? The cost profit. Plus. All over. All over what? Price. 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 Minus. Price. So just put this one in there, you find your quantity. So the fish cost is 80,000.
plus a profit of uh, 60,000. Then price is 10 minus uh, variable cost of six. And you just find the quantity that one is used to. And then you are done. Yes, bidding. Sir, the price is ten dollars. Are we not converting that uh, the, the currency there? Was the currency different? Yes, sir. Ten dollars for the selling price. Okay, forget that. Ignore the, ignore the dollars. It's a mistake. Thank you. So what did you get? Five thousand units. Five to five thousand. Thirty-five. Thirty-five thousand units. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. Please, I hope all of you are understanding it. Yes, it's important sir. to understand. We won't just copy. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's do this one. At a fruit stand, apples can be purchased at 15 pesos each and pairs for 20 pesos each. At these rates, a bag of apples and pears were purchased for three cities, 80 pesos. If the bag contained 21 pieces of fruit, how many of the pieces were pears? So at this, uh, at a fruit stand, apples can be purchased for what? For 0 0.15 each. And the pears for 0 0.2 each. At this rate, a bag of apples and pears were purchased for 3.81. If the bag contains 21 pieces of fruits, how many, how many of the pieces were pears? So this one is on equations. This one is on equations. So let's solve it. So, how many of the pieces were pairs? So it means that this one, you don't know how many pairs were what and how many uh, how many apples were also bought, isn't it? You don't know how many of pairs or apples were bought. So you represent the how many with what? Variables. So you say, let X and Y be the pieces for apples and pears respectively. Okay, let X and Y be the pieces for apples and pears respectively. And I told you that any time, last time I told you, any time you have to find uh, an answer for two variables, then you must have two equations. If it is one variable, one equation, two variables, two equations, three variables, three equations, before you can do that. So we have to develop two equations here. So who can tell me one of the equations? Who can tell me? How we can develop one of the equations? Yes, Yasmin. Yeah, they said that if a bag contains 21 pieces of food, so that means you can do X plus Y should give you 21. 21. Exactly. 
Exactly. So they said the bag contains 21 pieces of fruit. You know, pears, pears and apples are all fruits. So if the bag contains 21 pieces of, the bag that was purchased contains 21 pieces of fruit, that means that the number of pieces of apple, okay, plus the number of pieces or plus the pieces of pear is equal to 21. That is very good. So we have X plus Y is equal to 21. Okay, X plus Y is equal to 21. Any other, so we have had one of the equations. Any other equation that can be developed? Yes, uh, let me call Newark. 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 Uh -huh. They said as a fifth stand, apples can be purchased for 0 0.15 each and pears for 0 0.20 each. So you can get another equation, which is 0 0.15 x plus 0 0.20 y will give you 3 points. Thank you very much, Nuek. So Nuek is, Nuek is developing an equation that is relating the cost of the apples to the total cost. Okay, it is creating the cost of the fruits to the total cost. That is very good. So the cost of, you know, the total cost says a bag of apples and pears were purchased for. So that is the total cost in care. So the cost of purchasing the apples plus that of the pears is equal to 0 0.3.81. So have 0 0.15x plus 0.2y is equal to 3.80, okay? It's equal to 3.80. So once you have this, you can now solve this simultaneously. Okay, you can solve this simultaneously. So to solve this, let's use the substitution method. So we can make this equation one. So this is equation one. And then this one will be equation two. So let's make make x the subject of equation one. So making x the subject of equation one, we will get x is equal to 21 minus y. And that can be named as equation three. So x is equal to 21 minus y, equation three. Then we substitute equation three into equation two. So we substitute equation three to equation two. Doing that, doing that, we'll get, so when we see X, we put whatever. So we get 0 0.15 into bracket 21 minus Y plus 0 0.2 Y is equal to 3.80. Then we solve for y. Please, I hope you are following. So yes. 0 0.15, we'll open the bracket. 0 0.15 times 21, please, what do you get? 3.15. Pardon? 3.15. Okay, minus 0 0.15 y plus 0 0.2y 
is equal to 3.8. Then we group like terms. So grouping like terms, we get negative 0.15y plus 0.2y is equal to 3.8 minus 3.15. So the minus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.2, what do you get? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So 0 0.05y is equal to 3.8 minus 3.15. 0 0.65. 0 0.65. Then your y is, you divide both sides by 0 0.05. So y is equal to what? 18. 13. 13. So that is the number of pairs. We said why should be the pieces for pairs. Okay. So that is the so that is the 13. Now if you want the pieces for apple, how many would that be? So try the 13 from the 21. Eight. Now eight. Eight. Yeah. Okay. So you will end by saying that there are 13. pieces of pairs. Okay, there are 13 pieces of pairs. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. So we are done with that lesson. Please, any question thus far? Any question thus far? Because we are moving on to calculus. We are moving on to calculus. Yes, Nuek. Work your hand is up. Mata. Sir, please. When you are giving the question, what will help you notice that this is an equation question and this one is a functional question? The function, if it is a function and you are to develop uh that this one you, you will realize that they'll give you certain information like x1 if this is this this can be sold at this or x1 x2 y2 uh y1 if they don't give you y2 y1 they'll give you a way to find it so you know when it's a functional question they'll give you the unit and price in there okay but when it's an equation question they'll give you let's say the variable cost first cost and those uh, items like uh, the, uh, the simultaneous equation things. Okay, where you will see Y2 and Y1 and all those things. And then another way to be able to uh, better prepare yourself for that is to solve a lot of questions. The more you solve a lot of questions, the more you become used to how the questions come and what is expected of you. Are you okay? All right, thank you. Okay. So let's move on to calculus. Now, calculus is from the Greek word called stones. Yes, who prefers SP? 
Sir, sir, please, is there any book recommendation you could give us so that we'll solve more questions? Yes, there are rec book recommended in your slides, and I think I have them. I'll give them to BHTCR, then they'll distribute it for you guys. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Yes, Martha, you have another question again. Okay, thank you. Now, calculus. We are starting with calculus. Calculus is from the Greek word called stones. You know, in the early, early days, our forefathers, they started counting with stones. Okay, they started counting one, two, three with stones. Okay, so that is where calculus has its origin from. It's from a Greek word called stones. But because of that, a lot of students think of calculus as something very difficult, as though it was a big stone that has been tied around them to pull. You know, because it's from stones. So they think it is something heavy. You know, stones are quite heavy for them to lift. A lot of students consider calculus as a, a very difficult uh, a very difficult topic to tackle it. Okay, it's under calculus that we have the we have the differentiation and what and integration. Okay, we have the differentiation and integration. So it's under calculus that we have this these topics. So what we are going to do here is we are going to look at differentiation and we are going to look at integration. But the most important, however, is the application of the differentiation and the integration. Please, I'm stressing on it again. It is the application. So you may get one or two questions in the session A as differentiate uh, this function or integrate this function. That is not more of what the topic is bordered on. So what we are going to do is that we are going to learn the principles and of differentiation and integration. We are going to learn how to differentiate and integrate, but most importantly, the application, okay? The application of differentiation and integration. So if time permits, we are going to deal with the rules, we are going to first of all start with differentiation. So we are going to deal with the rules of differentiation, how to differentiate. And don't worry, whether or not you have done differentiation before, I am going to teach as though no one has ever done differentiation. Okay, I know some of you, you did EMATS back at senior high school. So you know how to differentiate at least. We are covered sent with certain rules of differentiation. If you didn't do e at school, at senior high school, don't worry yourself, okay? Don't worry yourself. I am going to teach as though no one has studied differentiation before, okay? So that is it. So we are going to start with differentiation. Yo, let's begin. Now, differentiation has its root from this. Y is equal to MX plus C. Okay, differentiation has its root from Y is equal to MX plus C. But more importantly,
more importantly, the M. The M, this. Okay, more importantly, the M. So differentiation is basically looking at change. Okay, it's basically looking at what? Or oh, it's from the, it's, it's, it's a change, looking at the measure of change. So you know that the M, we know the formula for M already. Y2 minus what? Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So, the y2 minus y1 is changing y. I will represent, I will uh, do the sign for change. But let me just write y. It's changing y. And then x2 minus x1 is changing x. So this is the change. Hey, this is how to write the change. This. Hey. This is the sign for the change. So it's change in y over change in what? X. Okay, so the y2 minus y1 is changing y, and the x2 minus x1 is changing x. Now, in Greek, this sign is called delta. This particular sign I have done here is called delta. Delta. Eh? That's how the Greek delta. Okay, that sign is delta. So instead of the sign, the Greek makes it d, dy x delta y delta x okay dy dx so delta y delta x so it goes forward to become dy so dy dy eh dy dx so that is it so if you see dy dx it is coming all the way from the m that is the slope of a line so m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 then this y2 minus y1 is called changing y x2 minus x1 is called changing x now this sign is called delta so the Greek represents the sign with D. So if you see dy, dy, it's changing y over changing x, that's all. Are you getting a point? So this is where dy, dy, uh, x started from. And if I should take my time to give you the proof of differentiation, which I will not, okay? The proof of differentiation, the rules that I am going to teach you, if you want to prove those rules, you prove them from the M, but I will not do that. Uh, time will not permit, I won't do that. You prove them from the M, okay? You prove them from the M, but I will not prove them. So that is where differentiation is coming from. So when we talk of differentiation, differentiation is basically looking at change. So we are saying that the change in one variable as a result of an infinitesimal change in another variable, that is differentiation. Okay, so differentiation, let me type for you to see.
So differentiation is the change in one variable as a result of an infinitesimal change in another variable. So that's why I said that it is coming from change. Now we are saying that when we talk of infinitesimal, infinitesimal means that the change is so small, so small that it is close to zero. Okay, so for example, if we say that GPA and learning hours are related, by how much would GPA change if your learning hours change? If the learning hours change so small that it is close to zero, how would GPA change? Well, if the change in learning hours is so small that it is close to zero, how will GPA change? You can do that with differentiation. If, for example, we also say that price and quantity are related, then how will uh, quantity change if price changes by a very small unit? Okay, so that is what differentiation. So differentiation is basically what change, and it is coming from the M. Like I said, I can prove the rules, but if I were before you on the board, if I were before you face to face, I would have done that. But here, the writings are going to be difficult for me. So I do not want to go into that. But if we were to be face to face, I would have uh, given you one or two proof or proved one or two of the rules for you to see. Okay, but I won't do that here. It's going to be difficult for me on this board. Okay, so that is differentiation. Okay, that is differentiation. So moving forward, we are going to look at the rules of differentiation. So right, rules of differentiation. So rules of differentiation. So the rules of differentiation. Now the first rule consider, there are three basic rules. No, there are several rules, but three basic rules. Those three basic rules, all other rules will employ these three basic rules. So the three basic rules I am going to give one, it's a constant rule. The constant rule. Okay, the constant rule. Now, if you look at this particular equation here, y is equal to mx plus c, we usually refer to the c as constant. We usually refer to the C as constant. Now, constant because it does not depend on why does not depend on on the C to change. Okay, why does not depend on the C to change? So we call the C a constant. So if why does not depend on C to change, then it means that whatever happens, okay, whatever happens uh, to C. Why will still remain the same? Okay, whatever happens to C, why will still remain the same? So the rule says that the derivative of a constant number is zero. Derivative means the change. The change in a constant number. Okay, whatever happens to this C, why will remain the same? So we are saying that the derivative of a constant number is what is zero. Okay, the derivative of the constant number is zero. So that's the constant rule. So if you have, for example, y is equal to y is equal to k, 
This is how we represent the K. K, where K is the constant. Then we are saying that the change in Y, look, this is how I write dy x. Now, please write dy dx like this in your book. dy over dx. But this is how I'll be writing it for the convenience of typing, dy dx. This is how I'll be writing my dy dx. But don't write it like this in your book. This is how I'll be writing it on the board, but don't write it like this in your book. Always write it like this. Please write it like this in your book. Write it this one, write this one in your book. Write this one, write it like this. Always write the ideas like this in your book. But because of typing, I'll be writing it like this. Anytime you see that something like this, you write it like this, please. Thank you. So we are saying that if K is a constant, you have to differentiate Y with respect to uh, K. And K is a constant. Then we are saying that it is zero. So the Y dx is zero. Once the thing is a constant, number or it's constant okay so the derivative of a constant number is zero take note of that okay it's zero so example example if i have y is equal to two and i say differentiate this then dy dx is equal to zero. Okay, dy dx is equal to what? Zero. Because two is a constant. Another example, y is equal to negative 3,000. If I say differentiate this, dy dx is equal to zero. Okay dy dx is equal to what? Zero. So that is the constant rule. That is the constant rule. Okay, that is the constant rule. So that's the first rule. The first rule. Now the second rule is the power function rule. Power function rule. That's the second rule. The power function rule. So for the power function rule, this is why we have y is equal to y is equal to x to the power n. x to the power n like this, okay? x to the power n. If you have to differentiate something like this, anytime you have something like this, you have to differentiate. How do you do that? You use, you apply the power function rule. So the power function rule says that to differentiate, which is dy over dx is equal to take the power, which is n, multiply by the base x, and subtract one from the power. Okay, take the power and multiply by the base x and subtract one from the power. So you get n minus one. So this is the power function rule. Take the power multiply by the base and subtract one from the power. So that is the power function rule. So example. If 
I have if I have y is equal to x to the power x to the power five. If I have x to the power five, I have to differentiate this. Then I'll get take the power, which is five. So dy dx is equal to take the power, which is five, multiply by the base. So I get five x. Then I subtract one from the power. To subtract one from the power gives me what? Four. So I get, so when I differentiate x to the power five, I get five x to the power four. Okay, I get Yo, before I'm back. My network is back. It is Ghana with you. There will surely be a margin of error. So forgive me for that. Please, are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Yes, sir. Oh. Ghana with you. So forgive me. Eh? Yes, sir. Okay, so I was looking at the second rule. It means me that all the things I've written on the board is point. That's the one. So the second rule is the power function rule, and I've given and I've given one example. The second example I'll give is so example two is y is equal to x x to the power negative four, negative, negative three, x to the power negative three. So if you have to differentiate this, okay, x, y is equal to x to the power negative three. If you have to differentiate this, now have dy dx is equal to, take the power, which is negative three, multiply by the base x and subtract one from the power. So what do I get? Exactly. So you get negative one four. So this is the power function rule. Okay. Then the last basic rule we look at is a generalized power function rule. That's a third basic rule. Generalized power function rule. Generalized power function rule. So this one is similar to that of the power function rule. You can see power function rule there. But this one has a coefficient other than one. So I have y is equal to ax to the power n. 
if you want to differentiate it, dy dx is equal to a n x or n a x a n x to the power n minus one. So I have y is equal to a x to the power n. So multiply a n x to the power n minus one. The same, okay. But the a and the n will multiply, and there will be numbers. So it's similar to the power function work. So example. I have three x to the power four. I have three x to the power four. Oh, sorry, y is equal to, let me make it y is equal to. So y is equal to three x to the power four. If you want to differentiate that, we are saying that dy dx is multiply the four by the three. That will give you 12. So 12 x and subtract one from the power. So give you 12 x to the power of three. Please, I hope you are following. Because of the way that it's not going fast. So fast. Can you it again? You said A and X, but then you, you just multiply the three by the four to give it to. Yes, so uh, A, A times N. Oh. A times N. So three times four. Is that it? You understand it? Yes. Yes, so three times four gives you 12. Yeah, because they are variables, that's why I, I have made it, I've, I left it as they are. But because they are numbers, you get the product. So 12x to the power of three. The next example, y is equal to y is equal to negative seven x to the power To the power negative six, what will you get if you differentiate? Yes, who can do that for me? Negative seven x to the power negative six. What do you get? Yes, I A C B R. Forty two x exponent negative seven. So forty two x to the power negative. Seven. Yes, please. So these are the three basic rules under differentiation. All other rules we are going to look at employs or employ these three basic rules. Hey, CB, lower your hand if you don't have a question. Okay. So the constant rule, the power rule, and the generalized power rule. Okay, power function rule. With what? These are the basic rules. Please, any question with regards to the basic rules? Any question? Okay, so let's move on to the other rules. So we are going to look at rules regarding three or more functions or two or more functions of the same variable. Okay. Please uh, mute yourself, mute yourself.
to rules involving two or more functions of the same variable. So one, we have the addition rule, some difference rule. We have the sum difference rule. Now the sum difference rule is applied when two or more functions are uh, adding or what? Subtracting. When you are adding or subtracting two or more example, I have y is equal to x to the power three plus two x to the power two. Oh, no, let me give you the general, this one. Now, y is equal to f of x, f of x plus or minus g of x. Okay, y is equal to f of x plus or minus g of x. The rule says that differentiate each function separately and what? Add or subtract, okay? Differentiate each function separately and add or subtract. That is the sum difference rule. So you get y, uh, dy dx is equal to f prime of x. I'll indicate, I'll explain this f prime to you. f prime of x, plus or minus g prime of x. Let me press. So f, f of x here is plus or minus, put the minus under it. Here to put the minus under it. And then this is how to write the prime. Put some apostrophe on top of the f. Okay, and then apostrophe on top of the g. So take note that the dy dx that you see, okay, dy, the dy dx this dy okay this dy dx this dy dx is the same as is the same as is the same as f prime of x okay so divide the x is the same as f prime of x Please take note of that. Okay, dy dx is the same as f prime of x. So anytime you see f prime of x, it's the same as dy dx. So it means, it means that they have differentiated the function. So there's some difference rule says that differentiate each function separately and add or what? Subtract, depending on whether they are adding or subtracting. That is what the sum difference rule says. Okay, that's what the sum difference rule says. So looking at examples. 
Why is it called to? Why is it called to? Uh, extra power three plus extra power three plus uh, two extra power two minus x plus 75. So let's differentiate this. So here is x to the power three. This is two x to the power two. Okay. So x to the power three plus two x to the power two minus x plus 25. We have to differentiate this. So to differentiate this, the rule says that differentiate each function separately and add or subtract. So dy dx is Differentiate the first function. Now, if you differentiate the first one, what do you get? 3x. Yes, yeah, 3x. So 3x. Is that all? 3x squared. 3x squared. 3x squared. Three squared. Three okay, squared. I'll put my square there later. Plus, now if you differentiate the second function. X. 4x. 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 Thank you. Then you look at the sign. Okay, look at the sign minus. So minus. Then we differentiate the next function. What do you get? One. 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 You get one. You all agree that when you differentiate x, you get one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you get one. Then plus. When I differentiate seventy-five, what do I get? Yeah. Yeah. Zero. 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 Seventy-five is a constant. It's a constant. So you see that in this particular, uh, in this particular example, I have applied all the three basic rules. I have applied the constant rule. I have applied the uh, power function rule, and I've applied the generalized power function rule. So you get zero. You don't bring it. Okay, you get zero. Don't bring it. So Yasmin. You have a question. Yeah, how did you get a negative one? When you differentiate the uh, yeah, it's negative already. Then when you differentiate x, what do you get? Look at this. Let's differentiate x here. Some people, I know some people don't understand why differentiating x will give us one. Let's demonstrate. Let's say y is equal to x. Y is equal to x. This is it. So check. Now, this x, its power is one. It has a power of one. So if I should apply the power function rule, then I say that dy dx is equal to one, the one times x gives us x. Then if you subtract one from here, you get zero. So x to the power zero, any number raised to the power zero is what? It's one. It's one. one. So dy dx gives us one. That's when you understand. Yes, thank you. Exactly. So that is why we get one over there. So that is it. Another example. Why is equal to? Four over five. No, let me. The over will become some way for me. <laughs> uh, four x to the power. Negative. Five. Plus. Seven. X to the power three. I'll put all of them there later. Minus five x to the power negative 
two last thousand. So yes, four x to the power. R remind me. Minus negative five. five. Negative five. So when I'm saying it, please be, be writing it because you know how my board is. Then yes, yeah, seven x to the power. Three. 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 Yes, five s to the power. What? Minus what? Two. two. Minus two. So let's differentiate this. Let's differentiate this. So we got dy over the x. It's equal to what? Negative 20x to the power negative six. So I get negative one, 20, 20 x, x raised to the power negative, the power one, negative, negative six, six. Uh -huh. plus 21 x squared, 21 x squared, plus 10 x raised to the power negative three. So 10 x to the power negative three. three. That's all. The constant is zero. Then the thousand will be zero. So that is the sum difference rule. Okay, that's the sum difference rule. Now the next rule we look at is the product rule. The product rule. The product rule. So the product rule is when the functions are multiplying. Okay, when the functions are multiplying. So you have you have y is equal to f of x. Multiplying g of x. So they are multiplying. Okay, f of x multiplying g of x. So the rule says that, the rule says that to differentiate this, dy dx is equal to differentiate the first function. So you get f prime of x. Okay, maintain the second function, g of x. Then plus, differentiate the second function, g of g prime of x. Maintain the uh, first function, f of x. I'm going to write it again. Differentiate the first function, maintain the second function as it is, plus differentiate the second function, then maintain the first function as it is. That is the product rule. Okay, that is the product rule. So an example. Example. I have x plus one, multiplying x minus one. Okay, x plus one, multiplying x minus one. I have to differentiate this. Now to differentiate this, we are saying that dy dx, so this is y is equal to, make it y is equal to, please. Y is equal to. Mm -hmm. So dy dx, 
is equal to differentiate the first function. So we differentiate this. Now, when we differentiate this, what will we get? One. One. Thank you. Yeah. Then maintain the second function, x minus one. Maintain the second function as it is. Plus, differentiate the fair, uh, second function. When you differentiate the second function, what do you get? One. You also get one. Then maintain the uh, first function. Please, do you understand? Yes, sir. No, 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 no. no, no. I am no. going over. I am going over. Pay attention. The product rule says that if you have two functions multiplying, if you have two functions multiplying, the rule says that take the first function and differentiate it. When you differentiate the first one, the second one, don't do anything to it. Write it as it is. Plus, now do the second one. The second one, differentiate the second function. And then write the first function as it is over there. Do you get it, the English? So I have y is equal to x plus 1 multiplying x minus 1. First one differentiate, second one maintain. So plus. I will differentiate the first function, which is x plus one. Now differentiating x plus one, what do you get? You differentiate the x, you one. get one. You differentiate the one, you get zero. One plus zero. zero is one. That is what you see here. Then the second one, you differentiate the second. Uh, Function that's one to you get one that will maintain the first one function. Please do you understand it? Yes, sir. Yes, so when you are done, the rest is simplification. The rest you are not going to differentiate, you are going to simplify what you have done. So simplifying, you open the bracket, opening the bracket will get x minus one. You get x minus one plus x plus one. So x plus x gives us what? Two x. Negative one plus one gives us zero. So our final answer is what? Two x. That's all. Good. You understand? Yes. Another example. Yes. Another example, so that you understand. Another example. I have y is equal to uh, two x two x squared plus three. Multiplying x to the power three minus x. Okay, so here is two x to the power two plus three. Yes, x to the power three, three. minus x. Now let's do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, work. It's just a coincidence that the question I gave is a difference of two squares. But just apply this, uh, the, the, the principle that I am giving, whether it's mm -hmm. a difference of two squares or not. Let's move on. So to differentiate this, the rule says that differentiate the first function. So dy dx. When we differentiate the first function, what do we get? Four x. Four x. Okay. When you differentiate the three, you get zero. Into bracket, maintain the second function, which is x cube. 
minus what? X. Then plus, differentiate the second function. What differentiate the second function? What do we get? 3S So that 3S squared minus, 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 minus what? One. Minus one. So maintain the first function, which is 2x squared plus what? 3. Don't let it becoming plenty confuse you. Just follow the principle and you'll be, you'll be okay. So let me press. Sir, please, when you were differentiating the thing, how do you get them? When you differentiate, three, three, three is, is a constant. constant. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Three is a constant. So when you are done, the rest is for you to open your bracket and simplify. That's all. Hmm? That's all. So here we'll get y squared times s to the power uh, three gives us four x to the power four minus y squared four uh, x four x times x gives us four x squared. Then this one, you open the two brackets, three x squared times two x squared gives us what? Six, six x to the power, x to the power four. Then three x squared times three gives us what? Nine x squared. Okay, then negative one times two x squared becomes negative two x squared plus the negative one times three becomes negative three. Let me dress. So here it becomes four x to the power four. Four x to the power four minus four x squared plus six x to the power four. plus 9x squared minus 2x squared minus 3. So when you finish, you add all the, you will simplify. So 4x squared plus 6x squared, 4x to the power 4 plus 6x to the power 4 gives you what? 10x to the power 4. So 10x to the power 4. Then negative 4x squared plus 9x squared gives us what? Plus 5x squared. Minus 2x minus 3. That's all. Yes, Yasmin. Um, sir, please, how did you get from the 6x square with the power 4 to the I am, negative? I am, I am opening this bracket. I am multiplying. I am multiplying these two brackets. Look at it. This. This. So 3s squared times 2s squared. What do you get? 3 times 2. What do you get? 6. 6. 2 plus 2 gives you what? 4. That's what you see here. Okay. Then 3s squared times 3. Uh, gives nine. you 9s squared. Okay. Then negative 1 times 2s squared. Are uh, supposed to give us uh, negative two s squared here. So here is supposed to be square. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then negative mm -hmm. one plus three uh, times three gives us negative three. So simplifying mm -hmm. four s to the power four plus six s to the power four gives us ten x to the power four. Then the square are uh, negative four s squared plus 9x squared minus 2x squared will give us 3x squared. So please correct the 5 to 3. It's not to so obtain it to 3. 3x three squared minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Sure. So this 2s is canceled. Please cancel it. That's all. So that is 
the product rule. That is the product rule. Now on your own, solve this for me. That's the last example on the product rule. Why is equal to? Three X to the power three plus six. Oh no, let me change it. Let me change it. Four X to the power three to bracket seven X squared. Minus 10. <coughs> so please. Solve this for me. 4s to the power 3. Into bracket 7s squared minus 10. Solve this for me. So please, what are you getting? Oh, should we do it together? Okay, because of time, let's do it together. You are with, I take you so much time. So, dy dx is equal to differentiate the first function, I get 12x squared. I maintain the second function, which is 7x squared minus 10 plus differentiate the second function, which is 14x. I maintain the first function, 4x cubed. Please mute yourself. So when you finish, the rest is for you to simplify. So the rules of differentiation actually is not difficult, but sometimes the, the simplification. So 12 times seven, what do you get? 84. 84. Yes, Yasmin, your hand is up. SP, your hand is also up. Sorry, mistake. SP, okay. So 12, seven, 84. So 84, X to the power of two. Minus oh. 12 times 10, 120. Yeah, X squared. Is it four? Yeah, yeah, four. Four. Yeah, four. X to the power of four. Thank you. X to the power of four. Thank you. Thank you. X to the power of four. X to the power of four. Sure. Minus 12 X to the power, a 120 X to the power two. 
plus 14 times 4. 56. Six to the power of what? 4. X. Four. Four. X. To the power four. Then you add 84x to the power four plus 56x to the power four. What do you get? 140x to the power four. I can't hear you. 140x exponent four. Okay, 140x to the power four. Minus 120x squared. That's all. So this is the quotient A, power A, product rule. The last rule we'll consider that we we'll close for today is the quotient rule. Okay, the last rule considered today is the quotient rule. So the quotient rule. So the quotient rule is when the two functions are divided. So that one we have y is equal to f of x over j of x. So the rule says that Maintain the lower function. Okay, so SP. Uh, please, my question is that with the with the uh, product to the the last example, what if you decide to expand the? Yes, yeah, someone can the, decide to expand before differentiating. I, uh, I think you should get the same answer. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, you get the mm -hmm. same answer. Yeah, you get the same answer. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You are welcome. So dy dx is equal to the rule for quotient says that maintain the lower function, which is g of x, differentiate the higher function, f prime of x. Anything you are differentiating, make it f prime. Okay, maintain the lower function, differentiate the higher function, minus maintain the higher function, which is f of x, differentiate the lower function, j prime of x, all over the lower function squared. So it says that maintain the lower function, differentiate the higher function, minus maintain the higher function, differentiate the lower function, all over the lower function squared. Okay. Maintain the lower function, differentiate higher, minus maintain higher, differentiate lower, all over the lower function squared. Now there's a mnemonic to remember this. Sometimes it confuses, so there's a mnemonic. The mnemonic is that, the mnemonic is low the high, minus high the low, over low low. That is the mnemonic. 
to remember it. Okay, that's the mnemonic to remember this. So low the high minus high the low over low low. So low means that maintain the lower. The high means that differentiate the higher. Minus high the low. High means that maintain the high, which is f of x. The low means that differentiate the lower. Over low 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 means the, low, the lower one two. Mm. So that is the mnemonic to remember the quotient word. Mm. That's the mnemonic to remember the quotient. Mm. So let's solve examples. So I have y is equal to x minus one over x plus one. So to follow the rule, okay, I have y is equal to x minus one over x plus one. To follow the rule, just follow the rule, just understand the principle and go by this principle. That's what I always encourage students to do. No matter how clumsy and how complicated that this one becomes, just go according to the principles and everything will be fine. So divide the x. Divide the x is equal to, it says what? Maintain the lower function, which is x plus one. Differentiate the higher function. If I differentiate the higher function, I get one. Minus, maintain the higher function, which is x minus one. Differentiate the lower function, I get one. All over the lower function squared. So x plus one squared. That's all. The rest is for you to simplify. Mm -hmm. The rest is for you to simplify. So if to, to simplify, uh, the lower one, leave it as it is. Don't, if like, don't open it. Okay. The lower one, don't open it. Just simplify the top. So what do we get? We get x plus one minus x plus one. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. yes sir. Are you sure it's a lie? Uh, yeah. yeah. So we got x plus one minus x plus one, that's all. So x minus x is zero. One plus one is two. So I get two over x plus one squared. And just leave the lower one as it is. Leave it as it is. Okay, don't worry yourself there. That's all. So this is the answer for that particular question. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So please want to differentiate the lower one, or you leave it like that. Which differentiation again? 
Uh, yes, so that the term is expand, not differentiate. Take note that you differentiate once, you apply the rule once, the rest is simplification. So when you apply the rule, the rest is to simplify, not to differentiate. So I'm saying that the lower one, don't expand it, leave it as it is. Okay? Yes, sir. Just leave it, yes. Please you can decide to expand. You can decide to leave it. It will not change anything. Okay. Quadrant, the nothing will cancel out. Okay. Nothing will cancel out. So just leave it. That's all. Yes, SP. There is a former hand, sorry. Okay. Martha. Yeah, please. Does it apply to all questions? Yeah, yeah, all if questions. All questions. Hand. Just leave the, the lower, lower one. one. Uh, don't expand. Yes, please. You can decide to leave it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's solve uh, one more question here yeah, and then. We close. One more question that we close. Hey, Now, the last question we want to solve is why is equal to 2x? Okay, let me use this one 4x cubed over. The number you have dialed. Hey, said so of course now nah, behind seven x cube or seven x squared minus ten. So four x cube over seven x squared minus ten. So let's differentiate this and close. So the rule says that low the high, maintain the lower one. Okay, so maintain the lower one. So dy dx is equal to maintain the lower, which is seven x squared. Minus 10. Differentiate the higher, which is 12x squared. Okay. Then minus, maintain the higher, which is 4x cubed. Differentiate the lower. I differentiate the lower, you get. 14, 14 what? X, all over the lower one squared. So seven X squared minus 10 squared. So here is seven X squared minus 10, 12 X squared. 4x cube, 14x, 7x squared, 10 squared. Then simplify the top one and let's move on. That's all. Simplify the top one and let's move on. So simplifying, note that dy dx is written once. 
because that differentiating once arrest is simplification so equal to so 12 times 7 we get 84 84 x to the power 4 minus 120 x squared Minus four times this one is what? 56. 56, yeah. 56 x to the power four. All over seven x squared minus 10. So here was uh, here is eight four to the power four. Here is one twenty to the power two. Here is fifty six to the power four. Four. Here is two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Here is two. Here is also two. Yeah. There you simplify. So eighty four x to the power four minus fifty six x to the power four. 28 mm -hmm. powerful. Yes, minus 120 S squared all over this, then you are done. So 28 X to the power four minus 120 X to the power two, all over this, seven X to the power 10, uh, to the power two minus 10 squared. So these are the rules. We have other rules, special rules of differentiation before we move on to the application. We will look at the special rules on Wednesday when we meet. We have one outstanding class though, the one we're supposed to meet on Monday. Okay, I couldn't, we couldn't meet. We have one outstanding class, we arrange and have it. We are meeting for a total of eight times, eight times. Yes, yeah, two. Okay, so please make sure before we meet on Wednesday, you have gone through all these rules that we have looked at. I'll send them the book. You get examples to solve. Before we meet on Wednesday, God willing, we'll look at the special rules. Look at chain rule, exponential, and then natural log rules. They will look at the application. And then we'll be nearing the end of differentiation. Okay, so you all should have a very good night. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Before Thank that, any question? I didn't mean Thank you, sir. Is there any question? Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. No, there's no question. Sir, please, we need questions. I'll, I'll send the book. I'll send the book. And if possible, I'll send it to your set beforehand so that you can try okay. them. Yes, please. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.